In this presentation, we will see how to design 3-bit up-down synchronous counter. We have already designed the asynchronous version of this counter and in that case, the clock was not simultaneous. The clock was not given at the same time to all the flip-flops used. But here we are going to give the same clock at the same time to all the flip-flops. The flip-flops I have used are A, B, C, three flip-flops because we have to design 3-bit counter. This is known to everyone. If you are in this presentation, I hope you have learned the basic of the counter. And uh, T, C, T, B, T, A are the input of the three flip-flops that we are going to use. Q, C, Q, B, Q, A are the output of the three flip-flops and definitely they are the output of our 3-bit counter. We have the same logic as compared to the asynchronous one. We will have a control mode or a control input that we call as M. And depending upon its value, either we will count upward or downward. And in this case, I have assumed that when M is zero, when M is low, we will have up counting. And if M is one or high, we will have down counting. So depending upon this thing, we have to design it. And definitely there is a change. And the change is in the design. The logic is same but the design is different as compared to the asynchronous one so let's start it without wasting any time first of all I will explain the state diagram for this we have eight states because you already know three bit asynchronous counter or three bit synchronous counter will have eight state because two to the power three will give us eight and if I talk about the maximum count then it will be eight minus one that is seven and seven is represented by one 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 0, 0, 0 is the initial state and we will start our counting from this state and if I talk about this first eight cases when m is 0 we will have the up counting so let's see how it looks we will start from 0, 0, 0 we will go on 0, 0, 1 then we will go on 0, 1, 0 that is our 2 then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 this is up counting. Why it is up counting? Because for every passing clock pulse, we have a value that is greater. We, we were on zero. And once the clock pulse is passed, or we have the change in the circuit, the flip-flops are in the operational state and they have generated the output, we have the value equal to 001. This QC, QB, QA is changed to 001 from 000. So we have a higher value. In the same way, for the next clock pulse, we have 010, that is 2. So we have the higher values for every passing clock pulse. So we call it up counting. And in the same way, if I talk about the down counting, the value of M, that is our control input, is 1. One, and we have the eight possible cases so let's see what is there in case of down counting you can see I have started from 111 that is 7 the maximum count and for the passing clock pulse I am on 6 so we have a lower value for the passing clock pulse then I will be on 5 4 3 2 1 and back to 0 and then back to 7 so this is what we have to do in down counting and we have to implement this logic by using the T flip flop that's all we have to do in this presentation so let me write this important point down this particular case brown one is when M is equal to 0 and this green one is when m is equal to 1. So what I can say, I can say when m is equal to 0, we have up counter and when m is equal to 1, we have down counter. So let's design our circuit. I have already made this table. Only thing we have to do is to find out the next states and the input to the flip-flops. And once we are having this, we will implement it by using the 16 cell K map. And then the final step is the implementation of the circuit. So we will do this quickly. And uh, let me write these things down first. This one is my control input. This QC, QB, QA is definitely the present states. QC plus, QB plus, QA plus is the next states and this TC, TB, TA is the input of flip flops. So let's start with it. We will first find out the next state of the first eight cases that is for the up counting because M is equal to zero, the reason for the up counting. So I will write up counting for the first eight cases. Up 
counting and uh, we will use this state diagram to find out the next state if we are on 0 0 0 you can see the next state is 0 0 1 so the next state is 0 0 1 and I have already told you it's very simple to write down the next state in case of counter because every time you have to increment to 1 that is the counting actually so the present state is 0 0 1 the next state is going to be 2 so it is 0 1 0 in the same way if present state is 2 the next state is 3 0 1 1 you can also compare it from this state diagram the present state is 2 the next state is 3 and we are talking about the up counting so you have to consider this brown arrows not the green one and uh, when the present state is 3 the next state is 4 1 0 0 in the same way 5 6 7 and again back to 0 so we have completed the next state column for the up counting and I will use the excitation table for the T flip flop to get our input TC, TB and TA I hope you remember the excitation table of the T flip flop because we have used it a lot we have done uh, lots of practice of this thing so there is no need to make another extra excitation table for T flip flop we can do it directly when T is 0 we have memory and when T is 1 we have toggling and the excitation table will give us the value of T depending upon the value of the present state and the next state so first we will find out TC and as I am talking about TC C is the subscript it means we are talking about the C flip flop and uh, we have to see QC and QC plus because they are the present state and the next state for the C flip flop so 0 is the present state and a 0 is the next state it means we have a memory and memory is there when T is equal to 0 in the same way we will complete the 8 cases 0 is the present state 0 is the next state it means again t is 0 0 is the present 0 is the next so t is 0 0 is the present state next state is 1 so definitely there is toggling and when there is toggling we have t equal to 1 1 1 again same state so 0 1 1 again same state 1 1 again same 1 0 toggling so we have 1 as the value of TC in the same way we will do for the TB that is the input of the B flip flop and for this we will consider QB as the present state and QB plus as the next state so let's do it 0 0 it means TB is 0 0 1 toggling is there so 1 1 1 memory so 0 1 0 so 1 because of toggling 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 will give us 0 and finally 1 0 will give us 1 so this is how TB is there for the up counting and in the same way we will do for TA TA will be determined by using QA and QA plus 0 1 toggling is there so 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 so in all the eight cases we will have toggling so let's write it down for toggling we have t equal to 1 okay so we are done with the up counting case now we will move to the next part of this table that is for down counting and for down counting we will have the control input equal to 1 or high and we again have to follow the same steps to find out the next state we will use this state diagram or you can directly write it down because you know what will happen in case of down counting instead of incrementing 1 we will decrement 1 so 0 0 0 is there it means the next state is 1 1 1 0 0 1 is there it means the next state is 0 0 0 0 1 0 is the present state so next state is 0 0 1 0 0 1 in the same way 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 and finally 1 1 0 so this is how the next state looks for the down counting and we have to follow the same steps again to find out TC TB and TA for the down counting we will use the excitation table for T flip flop I will write it down directly TC is 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 and for TB I have 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 you can easily find out these values by using the excitation table I'm not going to do it again you can do it by yourself and uh, for TA we will have 
toggling for all these eight cases so it is high and in this way we have completed the table the circuit excitation table for three bit up down synchronous counter and this part is for down counting down counting and now the next step is to find out the minimized expression for TC TB and TA and we are going to use the K map for that and as there are four variables you can see there are four variables M QC QB and QA we have to use a 16 cell K map I have already made one I will paste it and we will use it directly and uh, we have to use three such maps for TC, TB and TA so I will paste two more two more maps we require okay and this is the last one okay first I will find out the value for TC so this first map is for TC and uh, we will fill it by this table initially we have 0 0 0 1 so we have 0 0 0 1 then we have 0 0 0 1 again so 0 0 0 1 and uh, for the last 8 values I have 1 0 0 0 so 1 0 0 0 and again we have 1 0 0 0 so 1 0 0 0 we have filled the K map and it's time to make the pairs or group of one you can say in this case we have pair and uh, these are the two groups that I can see and TC is equal to let's say this group is one the group of one we call as implicants and this group of one is two so TC is equal to one or two you can easily find out the value for 1 and the value for 2 I can write TC equal to for the first group I can write M complement QB QA or for the second group I have M QB complement QA complement in the same way I will use this map to find out the value for TB and for the first four cases I have 0 1 0 1 so we have 0 1 0 1 and for the next four cases I again have 0 1 0 1 then we have 1 0 1 0 so 1 0 1 0 and uh, after this we have 1 0 1 uh, 0 so let's make the group of ones this is my first group this is my first group and this one the group of four ones is my second group so TB is simply M complement QA or MQA that is definitely equal to that is definitely equal to M XOR QA now we will do for for TA that is very simple because you can see it is 1 or high every time for all the 16 cases it is high so we are going to get 1 as the value for TA all the cells will have 1 and I can make the group of 16 ones and we have a 16 cell K map so definitely TA is equal to 1 we are done with our K maps and now we will try to implement it so we require three T flip flops so let me copy the first flip flop this is A and in the same way we need the B flip flop I am making some space between these two flip flops because we have to implement the logic and this one is the last flip flop that we require which is C flip flop let's write down the input and also we have to give a common clock to these three flip flops that's why we are calling it synchronous counters this is the clock and it is given to the three flip flops at the same time okay this one is the clock and uh, this is a flip flop this is b flip flop this one is c flip flop this is t a t b tc 
the output is QA, QB, QC and the QA complement is there. I'm going to use QA complement that's why I'm writing it down. QB complement and QC complement. Now let's see what logic we have from the K map. TA is equal to 1. So I will give TA logic 1 with no problem. And uh, before implementing this logic, let me make the control input first. The control input is M and it will go like this. I will use a NOT gate to have M complement because you can see we have M complement in our expression from the K map. So this is the control input and uh, if I want to implement TB we have M complement and QA so a two input AND gate is required or M and QA. So we need AND gate here another AND gate here this one and then a OR gate this is my OR gate. Let's see what we have to do now. M complement QA. So I will have M complement from here. This is the first input and QA is the second input. And the output of this end gate will definitely go to the OR gate. And the second main term is MQA. Actually this is QA complement. That's why we have M XOR QA. A small mistake. So QA will go and we need M so M is given as the second input and then we will give the output to the OR gate and the output of the OR gate will be given to TB because it is nothing but equal to TB so you can see how we have to implement it and uh, now we will try to implement TC TC is equal to M complement QB QA if I rearrange this little bit I have M complement QA QB or M QA complement QB complement. You can see this M complement QA is nothing but the output of this AND gate. Here I am having M complement QA and this M QA complement is the output of this AND gate. M QA complement. So what I can do I will I will take this output and give it to the AND gate so that the output of this AND gate this AND gate is nothing but M complement QA from here you can see and this is QB so this is QB in this way we have the first main term for TC and we'll try to implement the second main term in the same way I will take the output of this AND gate and give it to this two input AND gate. We need another OR gate. Okay, and then we'll give it to TC. So you can see we have a up down counter that is definitely three bit up down counter and it is synchronous because the clock is given simultaneously. And we have to take just QA from here take QA, QB and QC. Now there is one question. What if I want to have a 4-bit synchronous up-down counter? Actually there is no need of another lecture for this topic. I am just going to cover it in this only. You have to just take this like we took this one and then this in again give it to the AND gate like this. Use a AND gate. Okay. And then again use uh, OR gate and the output of this OR gate will go to TD. So we have a 4-bit synchronous up-down counter and what if you want to use JK flip-flop then only a small change you need to do. You don't have the T as input but you have JA and KA as the input. This one is JA and KA we will have JB KB. So this logic 1 will be given to K as well and the output of this OR gate is not only for JB it will also go to KB. Similarly this output will go to KC also along with JC. So these are the two small changes that you can do to have a 4-bit synchronous up-down counter or you want to implement with the JK flip-flop.